or you're just talking about the feasibility of plans, okay? Mm -hmm. And promises are made by politicians all the time. <laughs> they are not always kept. And part of that has to do with who has power right. in politics. So I want to play this clip we dug up of you in 2005. Senator okay. Warren uh, is not a lifelong politician. When you were not. You were a Harvard law professor at the time, mm -hmm. and you were going to Capitol Hill uh, to testify on your area of expertise, the bankruptcy bill. And there were a bunch of politicians who were backing the credit card industry, trying to make it harder for people to be able to declare bankruptcy. That's and right. you went to testify, and you ended up going toe to toe with some of those senators who were defending the credit card in industry, including one senator in particular. Take a look. I submit, Senator, that there are many in the credit industry right now who are getting their bankruptcies prepaid. That is, they have squeezed enough out of these families in interest and fees and payments that never Maybe we should talk down. about usury rates then. Maybe that's what Senator, we should be talking about, not bankruptcy. I'll be the first. Invite no, me. I, I know you will, but let's call a spade a spade. Your problem with the credit card companies is usury rates from your position. It's not about the bankruptcy bill. But, Senator, if you're not going to fix that problem, you can't take away the last shred of protection for I got family. it. Okay. Uh, you're very good, Professor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Do you remember that? Yes. <laughs> I used to dye my hair brown. <laughs> <laughs> what do you learn from that, um, that exchange uh, that made you want to end up going into politics? That you don't get what you don't fight for. And that that's actually a good example. It's, I got in there and fought for what I believed in. I, over a million families a year were filing for bankruptcy at the time that that was going on. They were people who'd had terrible medical problems, people who'd lost jobs for extended periods of time, people who'd been left behind after a divorce or a death in the family. And those credit card companies, they just wanted to wring the last possible nickel out of them. Those companies were profitable in the extreme. And you know who they were making most of their money off? Families that were just right at the edge. And they wanted to make it harder for those families when it all went just completely wrong to get a chance to get back on their feet. I got in that fight, and I'm proud to have been in so, that fight. But that, that relates to the way power works in Washington. It's something you've talked about a lot. Frank, you, were, you wanted to say something before, and I want to ask you, ask you this. I mean, when you hear Senator Warren say, we're going to spend $100 billion on this, and we've got a $1 trillion plan for this, and we're going to do this, on, like, do you think in your head, I can see that actually happening and making things better here? Or do you think to yourself, that seems unlikely? It's hard to believe, because first of all, we need to know where that money's coming from. Does that mean my taxes are going up? Does that mean the next guy's taxes are going up? Is that coming? Where's that money coming from? And, uh, and the thing is, is, is we get everybody promising manufacturing's coming back. We get people promises that health care is going to get better. We get people promise all this stuff, and it never happens. For a simple fact, like on our IRS tax code. You have a 20% tax break for corporations that shut their companies down here and move overseas. So they get that 20% to move their equipment. Yep. So, you know, we had Trump. He come over to Lordstown. He come to Indianapolis. Right. He come Fort Wayne. He come everywhere and say, hey, we're going to bring these jobs back. He told the guys in Lordstown, Ohio, got a couple of good friends over there, Chucky e. Dennison and Tommy Wallaco. They were told, don't sell your homes. These jobs are going nowhere. Wow. They shut the plant down. Yeah. Yes. We just lost 300 jobs at Harley Davidson in Kansas City, Missouri. They lost their jobs in May. You know, we lost Rex Nord in Indianapolis. We've lost all kinds of GMs and different fabrications. So you could sit here and tell me that you're going to produce these green jobs, you're going to produce this, but you have all these uneducated people, and I'm not saying they're uneducated, but they're not in that field. You know, you're saying we're going to bring these car companies back. So why don't we take the tax codes off that are giving them and send them to leave? Quit giving these so, guys Frank, all this money. Frank, I'm there. I mean, this is part of the plan. You're right to ask the question, where does the money come from? Because what happened is, yeah, the guy made a lot of promises, but then they turned around and gave him even more tax breaks. And who did those tax breaks go to? They went to the biggest corporations. They kept the payments in there. So, in effect, you can make money by shipping jobs overseas under our current tax code. So, 
here's how I propose to do this. We're going to do child care. And by the way, we're going to do universal technical school, college. We're going to do student loan debt. We're going to do all of this with a two cent wealth tax. That's a tax on the 50 millionth and first dollar of the richest fortunes in this country. That's less than one tenth of one percent. That's I'm guessing that's not you, right? You ask me oh, if that's going to come, where it's going to come from. But the point is, it comes from there. The other part of the money, the money we're talking about here for uh, doing green manufacturing, where's that money going to come from? It's going to come from a couple of places. One, we're going to take away the subsidies from the oil and gas industry. You know, we need green. The second is just what you said. We're going to take away the tax breaks for moving jobs overseas. And the third is we're going to say to the biggest corporations in America that publicly report huge profits to their investors. Yes, I'm looking at you, Amazon, reports more than $10 billion in profits and sets their CEO compensation based on that, tells the investor community, and then turns around and pays zero in taxes. No more. We're going to have all these big companies. Wait, let me and it produces, here's the key. That's how we get the money. And then the question is how we spend it. We can spend it on child care. We can spend it on student loans. We can spend it on green investment in manufacturing right here in America. Here's the deal. I get why people feel discouraged. But the bottom line is, this is a democracy. And in a democracy, we need our budget, our numbers to align with our values. Senator, and Senator. our values are not that the top one tenth of one percent keeps their two cents and nobody else gets but any But wait a second, but they're Mitch McConnell's values. I mean, you, you're not going to be elected uh, ruler of the universe or uh, monarch. I mean, let's say Elizabeth Warren is the president of the United States. Well, say that again. <laughs> say it. <laughs> no, like, they had to, I mean... They had to scratch and claw to get two, re two Republican votes on a stimulus when the economy is going through the worst crash in 70 years. Yep. They fought them tooth and nail. They didn't give them a single vote on the Affordable Care Act, and they had 60 votes. Right. Okay. So you're walking in. You've got a website full of plans that might pencil out and people might like. But in what universe are those going to be passed? So that's the reason that I am here today. And it's the reason I've done 90 town halls. It's the reason that I've been to 20 states in Puerto Rico and I'm going to more. Because the bottom line is we've got to build a grassroots movement across this country. We've got to do it. It's got to be all of us. And, and if we do, it doesn't just help the person at the top. That's how we take back the Senate. That's how we take back the House. That's how we take back governor's offices and state houses and city councils. We build this thing up and down the line. You also need politicians and people who are in power like that to keep their word. When they yes, say you do. do something, they need to do it. Yes. And the thing is, is we need to go back where, no offense, Senator, but people like yourself and people like uh, uh, Paul Ryan and, and everybody else, they need to go back working for the American people because we're the ones that give them their paycheck. I agree. You know, we have policies in place where half of the Republicans want to raise the retirement age to 68 or 69, but yet they can retire out of Congress at 42, 45 and have health care for the rest of their lives. But I'm just like, saying, I mean, no, 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 so, I, I, just, I, I think you're getting at a point which is profound here, right? Which yeah. is that the question is, can you go, given what's happened both with Donald Trump and the nature of the structure of the American economy and what's happened in a place like Fort Wayne and all across Indiana for decades to come and say and they, that they will trust you in good faith, when you say we're going to bring those jobs back or we have a plan to change life here. So look, we can give up. You're right. We can just totally give up I'm and say, sure. hey, let them have it. Or what we can say is this is the moment that we fight. I am in this fight all the way. I want to. I want to. I want to.
address these small thinkers in Congress. How are you going to get them to come to your big ideas? So I'll tell you how. That's a good question. I'm counting on you, Susan. And I'm counting on everybody in this room, and I'm counting on millions of people who watch this. And what I mean by that is, yeah, it takes leadership from the White House. It takes the willingness to wade straight into the fight. But where it's really going to come from is when you build this grassroots movement, when you build this momentum, when people demand it, when people say, this is the America, I, I want an America that invests in little kids. Yeah. I want an America that cancels student loan debt. I want an America that invests in manufacturing here in this country. Hey, what if we're about men make. There you go. <laughs> we do the job, the same jobs that they do, we do them just as just I just don't see on this, good. Renee. I just don't see anyone in Congress or any of these high positions giving up any money. So <laughs> I, I just don't you're, see it happening. But you're here's the deal. So in a democracy. We're talking about, you're asking for two cents from one-tenth of one percent of the people. The rest of us have a say in that. We set the tax laws. And if we're willing to get out there and fight for it, the politicians, more of them are going to fall into line. Remember, on health care, I was in the Senate when... When we didn't have the votes you did to stop votes. the Republicans from repealing health care for tens of millions of Americans. But what happened? People from all over this country made their voices yeah. heard. They came to Washington. People in wheelchairs came to Washington. People, mamas, pushing the littlest lobbyists, these little babies who had serious medical problems. They got right in the faces of those senators. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it was the people across this country who pushed and pushed and pushed, and we got the votes and we saved health care for tens of millions of Americans. I think having watched the way these political dynamics manifest, right? Mm -hmm. It does matter whether people are willing to pick fights or not. Yeah. Whether they, it really does. Whether people want to. You say you're a fighter. Do you trust that every other Democrat in this primary field is a fighter in the same way? I know why I'm here. I'm here because I'm a fighter. So that's a no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Look. I'm, I'm, it's a serious no, question because it. But I'm not here. I'm not here to talk about other Democrats. I'm not here to slam other Democrats. I'm just telling you how I see it. This is the fight that I believe we need. Or, or, or back them is, is, is the issue. Is once we do, you know, do they honor their that's right. their promises? Do they honor their their policies that they're going to so put at in this place? Point, it, with you and your issue with Trump, and you believe in him, and he backing you or whatever, yeah. how is your vote swaying right now? Are you uneasy? Do you know? Are you going to oh, back her because she's oh, saying this? Oh, or? trust me. When it came to him, oh, let's, we won't we won't get into him because you know it, he's the first Republican I ever voted for, and I um, got a lot of people to vote for him. I believed in him, and that was just for your job and, security um, sake, and that is oh that no no no. Purpose. Just for the job security, I believed he was going to make a change. Period. Just like I believed in Barack Obama when I when I voted for him, because I believed we needed change. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Now I think it's time for another more change. change. I right. think it's time to put a woman in the White House. I think it's time <laughs> to uh, uh, listen to what we say, because we are out there working just as hard as men are. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me, or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.